Hello and welcome to today's lesson. We're going to be talking about Standard 1.1 in, in fourth grade and also topics in the Study Island lesson titled Patterns. So we're going to be looking at how to find a pattern in a sequence of numbers or list of numbers, a table, graphs, and pictures. So as we're going through today's lesson, please be taking notes so you can have those to refer back to when you're trying these problems on your own. And if I ever go too fast, just pause the video and rewind and you can get caught back up that way. And then you can even pause at the beginning of a question, work that question out, and then watch the video to check yourself so you can see how well you are doing these problems and where you might need some extra practice still. So I'm so glad that you're joining us today and let's go ahead and take some notes. When you're looking at a pattern that has numbers in it, this is a number pattern and it's just a sequence of numbers that are arranged according to a rule or formula. So they might be in a list, they might be in a table, but when you are seeing that the numbers are increasing, you're going to look for an addition or multiplication rule. When you see that the numbers are decrease, look for a subtraction or division rule. And then if some of them are, the patterns are going to have pictures in them, and this is a picture pattern. So you want to look first to see if there's a change in the number of objects in each picture. Then you want to see how much bigger or smaller the objects might be. And then if there's any addition or subtraction of different objects. So if they're adding in or removing. In order to figure out what exactly your picture pattern is. So at first we're going to look at some number patterns. So here I look at this list of numbers, 86, 79, 72, 65, 58, 51, and I see that they're decreasing. So the two operations that I know that decrease numbers is subtraction or division. So 80, 86 to 79 don't right off the bat think of anything I can divide 86 by to get 79. So I'm going to just figure out what the subtraction is. So if I take 86 minus 79, that equals 7. So that's a minus 7 rule there. And I'm going to see if that same thing applies. If I take 79 minus 7, that gets me 72. So this is also a minus 7. If I take 72 minus 7, that gets me 65. So this is also a minus 7. So, and then you can keep checking it. 65 minus 7 is 58. 58 minus 7 is 51. So the minus 7 is going to be my pattern. So here I'm going to figure out the next number. I'm going to take 51 minus 7, which you'll have to do some borrowing. And then 11 minus 7 is 4. And then 4 minus 0 is 4, so the next number is going to be 44, which is choice A, my final answer. Here's another set of numbers in a list or sequence, and they're 3, 9, 27, 81. So I look that they're increasing. They're increasing, so that means I'm either going to be looking for a multiplication or addition rule. So if I look at the addition, 3 plus what gives me 9? 3 plus 6 gives me 9. 9 plus 6 is 15, not 27. I would have to add 9 plus 18 to get to 27. So it's not an addition rule because the number that you're adding by each time isn't the same. So I'm going to look at multiplication now. So if I look, 3 times 3 gets me 9. Right? Let's see. 9 times 3 gets me 27. That's good. 27 times 3. I don't have that one memorized, so I'm going to have to check it. And so 3 times 2 is 6 plus the 8 is 81. So that one checks out also. So that means that my rule here is going to be times each number by 3. So to get the next number, I'm going to have to take 81 times 3. So here 3 times 1 is 3. 8 times 3 is 24. So 243 is going to be my next number, which is choice A. In this question, they're not asking me to find the next number. They're just asking me what the rule could be. So looking at my numbers, I see that they're decreasing. So I'm going to look. Can I subtract something from 69 to get 57, or can I divide something from 69 to get 7? Well, start with subtraction. 
So 69 minus 12 is going to get me 57. And if you weren't sure that, you could go off to the side here and take 69 minus 57 and you get 12. So that means 69 minus 12 gets me 57. Then I want to check that that pattern holds true for the rest of the numbers in the list. So I'm going to do 57 minus 12 is 45, so that checks out. 45 minus 12 is going to be 33. So that checks out, and then 33 minus 12 is 21. So that checks out. So minus 12 is definitely my pattern. So that says here that each number in the sequence is 12 less than the previous number. That's choice C, so it's going to be my final answer. Now I have a table. When I'm trying to find a pattern in a table, I'm going to look at each row. So. I'm going to look at how do I get from the input to the output. So here I have 84 and 68. They're going down. So I'm going to start with subtraction. And if the subtraction doesn't work, I'll look at division. So 84 minus what gets me to 68? Well, I'm going to have to go over here and work that out. If you can't do it in your head, I'm going to end up borrowing. So 16. So if I take 84 minus 16, that'll get me to 68. And I want to see, does that work for the 73? And I have to do some borrowing there, but it does work. 73 minus 16 is that 57. And then I continue to do it, and I see that it does continue to work for all of the rows. So that means to find out what the number beside the, uh, the input of 54 is, what that output is, and I'm going to have to take that 54, that's the input here, and subtract 16 from it, and that's going to get me my answer. So that's going to be 38, which is choice B, my final answer. Now I'm looking at another table where the input is missing. So I'm looking across from the input to the output, and my I have a 2 and then I have a 12, so my numbers are increasing. So I'm going to look at what, looking at, I'm going to look for a pattern of either multiplication or addition. So here, 2 plus 10 would get me 12. But if I go down here, 9 plus 10 is 19, not 54. So this tells me that my pattern is not going to be addition. So I'm going to try subtract. I'm going to try multiplication. So if I do multiplication, two times six gets me twelve. Nine times six equals fifty-four. Eleven times six gets me sixty-six, and the same for the rest of these also. So that means I'm looking for the number that if I multiply six by it, it will get me to forty-two. So what times six equals forty-two? Well. If you know that number, you can just fill it in. Or you could think about the opposite of that is division. So 42 divided by 6 is 7. So 7 times 6 is going to be 42. So that means B is going to be my final answer. Here, it just wants you to fill in the part that I've been writing between the input and output. So it wants you to write down, you know, is this going to be a rule of plus 6? a divide by 4 rule, a times by 3, or a minus 3. So if I'm looking here, 3 to 6, that's increasing, so it can either be plus 6 or times 3. Now, 10 plus 6 is 16, which isn't 30. So that means it can't be the plus 6, but 10 times 3 is 30. And 14 times 3 is 42, so that means C is going to be my final answer because I'm multiplying each of the inputs by 3 to get the output number. So this question says, suppose 75 is the input in a function machine with a function rule at 
pot plus 29. What would be the output? So it's just like this past table that we saw. We're going to have our inputs, and then we have the function rule of plus 29. And then we have our outputs. So if the input is 75 and you're adding 29 to it, that means to get our answer, you're just going to take 75 plus 29 which is 104, so that means B, 104, is going to be our output and final answer. Now we're looking at patterns that deal with graphs. So here the graph below shows the number of trees on a fir tree farm each year for four years. If the same amount of trees were added each year, how many trees are on the farm in 2005? So I look at the years 2001, 2002, 2003, 2004, 2005 is the one I'm looking for. So I'm just looking for the next one over. And if I look at this, 2001 looks like it's about 19. 2002 looks like it's about 24. 2003 looks like it's about 29. And 2004 looks like it's about 34. So if I look at each one of these, it looks like it's going up about 5 each time. So if I add another 5 to 34, that gets me to 39. So that means the next number of trees for 2005 is going to be about 39, which is choice D. Here's a line graph. And the question says, Cecilia wants to buy a DVD of movie she likes, but she waits until the price of the DVD is less than $15. She has recorded the price of the DVD each week for the last four weeks in the graph below. So at week one, the price of the DVD was $26. So I'm going to go ahead and write down these numbers so it's easier for me to see the pattern. At week two... The price of the DVD was at $23. At week three, the price of the DVD was at $20. At week four, the price of the DVD was $17. So if I look here, these numbers are decreasing. And if I go 26 minus 3, that gets me to 23. And then 23 minus 3 equals 20. And then 20 minus 3 equals 17. So if I want to go one more time to the fifth week, I'm going to take 17 minus 3, which is 14. And that's going to be my answer, choice C, $14 on the fifth week. So she can go ahead and buy it. Now we're looking at a picture pattern. And it says, if the pattern continues, how many tennis balls will be in the next picture? So this fifth picture. So I'm going to go ahead and count up how many tennis balls there are in each picture. So this first picture has three tennis balls. The second picture has six. The third picture has nine. And the fourth picture has twelve. So look at the pattern, and it looks like it's adding a row of balls each time, and each row has three in it. So I'm going to try adding three to 12, and that's going to get me 15 in the fifth picture. And if I look at my numbers here, each of them increase by three also. 6 plus 3 equals 9, 9 plus 3 equals 12, so that's definitely my pattern. So that definitely makes choice C, 15 tennis balls, my final answer. Here's my last question with a picture in it missing out of the middle of the pattern. So which one of the following diagrams could fit in the third position of this pattern? So I'm looking, and I want to look first to see if anything changes size. So far, it looks like the, every, all the triangles and stars, they all stay the same. And then I want to look for anything that's being added or subtracted. So here, I had one star. This time, I have two stars. And in the last one, I have four stars. So that probably means in the third position, I'm going to have three stars. So if I look down here at my choices... They all have three stars except W, so I know it can't be W. But if I look 
at choice Z, it also adds in the tiny blue star. Well, none of these have tiny blue stars, so that's not part of our pattern. It's just a little extra thing they put in there to try to trick you, so it can't be Z. And then if I look at the difference between X and Y, Y's third star they put in that square, and X's third star they put in that square. So if I look at the pattern, the pattern, the star always goes in that first blank square on the side. So here is a star, and then on here is a star. So that means the first blank one going around is going to be right here. So that means I want my star to be in this position to keep up the pattern. So that means Y, or choice A, is going to be my final answer. Thank you for joining us today, and I hope you learned something new.